So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to this video today. We're going to try a more simple Astro game using JavaScript and HTML as usual. Before we get started, though, I just want to go through some basic algorithms and linear algebra that we're going to need in order to program this game effectively. So, the original Astro game used a vector monitor for its graphics, so it offers uh, some great advantages like uh, good resolution at a cheap price and development cost. And, and yeah, so that could draw sharp graphics and to start with that. But it also has some limitations, like it could, couldn't draw field shapes, so and could only draw the outline of shapes. So that's why the, the asteroids here are drawn like this, with uh, just stroke graphics and, and are not filled. So Polar John is a geometric object with a finite ch chain of straight line segments, or that are called its edges or its size. And each point where two edges meet are a vertex, uh, and, and plural that is vertices. So here's some different polygons. So we have convex polygons and we have concave polygons. Concave polygons are basically just have these kinds of shapes within them. That makes uh, stuff like uh, collision detection a bit harder than when dealing only with uh, convex polygons, like a triangle and a rectangle. So in code, uh, you can implement the polygon something like this. So you have an ordinary list of uh, values. So where each two uh, elements uh, makes out a vertex or a coordinate for a particular vertex. And then you can just loop through all the points. And then you check if it's the first point then you move to that point, else you want to draw a line between them. And you can use that using the canvas rendering context, uh, begin path and stroke methods. And uh, so yeah, that's basically it for when how to draw them. So here's an example of what it can look like. And here I have the code for it. So you can see that I have just declared a list of points. And then I draw them to the canvas using this uh, begin path and stroke methods here look through all the points and stuff like that. So one uh, quite important thing to do, uh, at least when developing a game, uh, like as we to check if a particular point is inside of a polygon. And to do that, I looked through the internet and I found out, and I, uh, sorry, and I found this uh, blog post or article where uh, a guy, uh, yeah, Randall Franklin or something like that, checks uh, or describes the algorithm you can use in order to test if a particular point is inside of a polygon. But it is written in C and I think the original code was written in basic or something like that and <laughs> we won't bother going into that. But So I basically just read through the article and I found out this uh, sort of what the algorithm was about and I wrote down this pseudocode here. So basically what he does is he loops through all the points in a list of vertices and then he checks if uh, the y value on the test point is between the y point and the previous y point in the y points uh, of the vertices of course then he checks if the x I think it has something to do with the projection of the uh, difference in the x of, of the line on the x-axis and then he switches a boolean uh, from inside to outside each time uh, uh, he crosses the line, or from outside to inside, he toggles it between the different states. And that's basically the, uh, the, the, the contain points method. So here it is in, uh, in JavaScript code and uh, that I have written, and that's the basic code we are going to need use later on in the tutorials. Probably not until the second part of these uh, tutorial series though. So I've implemented this in this live demo here, and you can see when I hover over the polygon shape that the edge, that the edge or outline turns red. Another useful thing to be able to do is to rotate the polygon. And you can do that by a regular rotation matrix. If you see each of the vertex as a vector originating from the center of the polygon, and you can rotate it around that center or a, yeah, arbitrary points uh, that, that you take uh, the originating from using a rotation matrix. And a rotation matrix is basically, in two dimensions at least, is a 2x2 two two matrix that you just multiply by, by a 1x2 matrix. 
oh sorry, a two by one matrix. And the algorithm is as follows. So basically it took, take uh, each row here, times each column here in the second matrix. And the important thing here is that they are compa compatible. That means that the first matrix has the same number of columns as the second matrix has the number of rows. And I take stuff like here, we take x times a plus y times b, and that will make out the new point in the, yeah, or the, or the new row element in the, in the vector. And the dimension of the second matrix uh, is the same as the result you will get here. And then you do the same here for the second element. You take x times c plus y times d, and that will give us you the second element in the result vector, in the results. Anyways, so rotation matrix, you can do that uh, by some linear algebra, uh, sorry, some linear transformations. So I did that before I did this video and I found this clockwise rotation matrix in the HTML canvas Cartesian coordinate system. And that's just basically cosinus with angle you want to um, rotate with as the, as the first element and then minus sinus, sinus, cosinus of that angle you want to rotate with as the rest of the elements in, in this uh, order in this fashion here. So in code, again, it can look something like this. You create a matrix, and then you take out the current x and y values. Uh, you look through all the, ver the points or all the vertices, vertex in the vertices array, and then you take out the x and y points, and then you change them to these new values here, uh, depending on the, or, uh, the same as we did. Here, according to this algorithm here. But it's a bit redundant, as you can perhaps guess, since we're doing the same comp computation here two twice, both for the cosinus and both for the sinus here. So we instead we can take out the cosinus and sinus, and we just take minus sinus here instead, instead of taking plus the, this element here, we can take minus sinus like that. So that's a more efficient way of doing this. And if I just come uncomment this line here, reload it. Uh, the demo page, you can see now that the polygon is rotating and it's still working when I hover over it that the outline turns red. So that's basic knowledge we're going to need to have in order to program our game. So let's get started then. Uh, before we start though, I just want you to go to Google and search for John Resig class. I don't know how to pronounce his name, so anyway, you can go to this, search for Google for this, and it should be the first link. And you can read through this blog post and uh, where he basically describe a simple uh, class system or yeah, class inheritance system you can use in JavaScript uh, that he had developed. And it's really smart and it's really good. I liked it a lot. And it's also have this super functionality that you can call methods on the super class, uh, in this case the person class and and Post, uh, posting arguments to that super super method and stuff like that. So anyway, you can read through the uh, blog post if you want. A uh, link will be down in the description. But the important thing is to copy this, the source of this uh, uh, this here. So just go down to the second section of the blog post, copy this code here, uh, like that for now. So let's get started coding. So I'll just create a new folder uh, called Asteroids. And let's open it up with uh, Sublime Text now. Let's just close down this test page. And let's create that. Uh, finally, we just copied. So I will create a JS folder, a lib folder, and then I'll call class.js. In the side of here, I'll just copy this code from the blog post. Like that. And then we'll have our main class, our main file, main.js. And uh, canvas of the AS for now, I guess. And uh, that was a bit strange. That should be inside of that, I guess, I think. Well, let's see. Yeah, the main here was wrong. Let's move it. So, of that, guys. And it should, of course, be in the JS. Like that. Yeah. And then we'll have an index.html file as well. And why not use a uh, a CSS file, so I haven't used that in any previous tutorial. So let's create a CSS folder and a style.css uh, file in, in that folder. So let's grab some basic HTML, set the title, asteroids, like that, import the 
CSS file, CSS, style, CSS, and all the script files we have created so far. So I have the source, uh, JS, lib, class.js, and we have the source, canvas, sorry, JS, canvas, uh, JS, like that, and we have this, the, the main file as well, so JS, main, JS. And in the body, let's just create a script tag. And inside of here, let's just say ball game equals new game and game dot run like that. So let's go down into the main class or main file, create that game class. So say game ball game equals class dot extend. And that's the syntax from the blog post. And in the constructor, I will leave that empty for now. But in the run method, we'll just log out the message to the console for now. So say console log test. Now for now, if we open this up in a browser, look in the console, we should see the message test written out for us. So yeah, that's awesome. It's working. So far, so good. Uh, so yeah, let's create our canvas class then. So you say our canvas equals class class sorry dot extend like su and then constructor it'll take a width and a height like that a height I said <laughs> so bad spelling anyway and then inside of here we create a initial canvas or a member called canvas that's basically equal to document dot create element uh, canvas like so now we set the width of canvas to the width parameter and we set the height to the height parameter then we grab a context and now we use this self invoking function here with the context uh, uh, parameter that is related to return and that's so we can add additional methods on the context uh, I will explain later how we will do this but anyway so the so the argument to this self working function will just be basically this dot canvas dot get context 2d so we'll get our 2d context uh, canvas 2d context as a parameter and it will return it for now so Yes, this for now is the same as as if we have written this dot canvas to get context two D, but it we will use this sort of way of writing it since we can do stuff like syntax of width equals uh, context of canvas or width and stuff like that. So we can add additional members on the canvas. Let's actually add the width and the height for now. Yeah. And then let's, let's just append the canvas to the document, uh, to the body of the document. So document body of the pen child is dot canvas. Like that. So let's see if it works. So go down the, let's go down in the main class and let's say this dot canvas equals new canvas and as uh, parameters the constructor took the width and height so we'll take 640 pixels times 480 pixels and let's add some styling so we actually can see it <laughs> so center canvas the snippet I've used in many tutorials before here let's set color let's set black for now hopefully we'll load page yeah you can see that the canvas has been added to the page and let's actually add some more styling so we'll set a padding and a margin to zero on everything so that's good can get rid of the test message and yeah so let's code some actual stuff then so one way in the previous tutorials we have created this loop function here that basically has to the window request animation frame and stuff like that so we'll do the same sort of concept but we will abstract it out to the canvas class so I will create this method here I will call it animate uh, like so, and it will take a loop function 
as a callback, uh, as a callback, and then we'll create this uh, wrapper, uh, a self-implementing function, sorry, or wrapper, or whatever, around the window request animation frame. So it's a window request animation frame. Like so, and then we say window web git request animation frame or, or window dot moss request animation frame or window dot why not take Opera as well here request animation frame or window dot uh, ms request animation frame like that for now you'll see that we actually work with the request side of spell it right and stuff like that. Anyway, so we create uh, this wrapper here, so that will return the right version of the version that is present and store it into this variable here. And then we create a loop variable or a loop function that we call n, l for now. Inside of here, we will uh, uh, call the, 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 the parameter function here. And then we say rf l, and we have the self canvas. And where self here is a pointer towards the instance, and then we just kick off the loop here. So we say this our canvas and l like so to the RF method or function like that. So this is a bit more. We have abstracted out a part of the program, and that's is something we'll do a lot in this. Uh, in this series, we'll absorb out parts to make it easier for us to maintain the code and stuff like that. So let's go back to the main class now and let's see if it works. So you can say this.canvas.animate and take a function as callback. And let's log out our new message, test2. And open now, it should be written out test2 over and over again in the console. And yeah, that seems to be the case. So it's working. So we can do one more fallback in the canvas here. So we'll create this uh, fallback function. Take callback and elements as parameters, and here we say window dot set time out uh, callback one thousand over sixty like that. I guess, yeah. So that's it for all of the programs here. Yep, so that's working. So let's start coding some actual game futures then. So for this game we'll use a basic state system where we can where we take a reference to the current state and the next state. So the current state will be null at start and the next state it will be an ID. Uh, that's that will store in the states object that will be to the game at the start here. At least when we are doing our debugging, so I have states at the JavaScript object, and we have the no change ID that will set to zero, and then we have the menu state set at one, the game state set at two, the end state three, and the values here, of course, complete the arbitrary, but yeah, it seems logical to have them in, uh, in this order anyways. So the next state here will be 2 at the start. But then here, inside of the run method, we will just make a reference here to the instance. So we save ourself equals this, and then we can say if state is not equals to the states dot no change. So if we should change the state, then we will say a switch, take a switch statement, uh, of the yeah, like this self dot next state, I guess, and we have all cases. So have states dot menu, states dot game, and we have a case states dot end. Like that, and then we just make sure that we set the, the next state here to the no change ID like that. And inside of here, we basically say self dot current state equals new state for now. Then we take self as parameter and then we break it like that. 
And then on here, we can say self a current state dot handle inputs why not? And we have the update method and we have the render method. That will take uh, self the canvas or context as parameter, like so. So that's a basic state machine. So it will check if it should change the state, and if it should, it will change uh, to the current state, or the, change the current state to a new state there. And <laughs> and all of them will stay for now, but we later on we'll have stuff like game state, menu state, and so on and so forth. But we haven't implemented them yet, so let's just call them state for now. So let's create this state file in the JS folder, so we call it state Yes, we say well state is equals class dot extend. So this is basically just the super class here. And the constructor will take a game as a parameter and say this dot game equals game. And that game is basically just this self there that is pointing towards inside of this uh, in the constructor. And then we have the handle inputs method. Right I didn't took any arguments. And we have the update method and the render method. That took our context as a parameter. Like that. So hopefully now, if we just import this, we can close down the class class.js. So let's import it. Yeah, let's import it here. So have script source js state of js should get an errors no that's be fine so that means <laughs> that it at least works so let's create our game state in the js folder as well so the game state of js and that calls it to game state equals state dot extend so this super cause here is extend and it's just, just override a the constructor now with the game here so we can call the super constructor using this super like so and yeah so let's just call the update method for now just log out the message to see if it works so console log test three I guess <laughs> something like that I really don't know what number we are at but anyways so just make sure that we import it. So there's a script source js game state js like that and the main change this to game state and open now you should see that three written out in the console. And yeah, that seems good. So we now have our basic state system going. So let's add some content now to the game state like asteroids and stuff like that and let's import update the context here uh, to have like more methods to like so we can actually draw draw our polygons and stuff like that but anyway we can start by creating a polygon class so we call that polygon js let's import it or include it into the source file uh, Include it over here, I guess. Script order doesn't really matter, but yeah, anyway. Polygon .js, like that. And then inside of here, we say polygon equals class extend, like that. And then we here inside of here, we'll have stuff like rotate. Um, that will take your uh, angle. That it should rotate with, I call it theta for now. I have a scale uh, method that will take a constant as a parameter. That just means how much we will scale the polygon in size. And then we have the pass point function. That was the one I showed before. So that will take an x and a y position. As so, open to an ox, oy, I guess. Yeah. So offset. And then the text test point like that. But yeah, so that's basically it.
And of course, we will also have a constructor that will just take an array of points as arguments. And then inside of here, we say this dot points equals p dot slice zero. Slice in this context means that we'll copy all the points there. And we'll need to do that later on when we are having a library of points and we don't want them to be the same on every object since when we rotate one of them all will rotate so that's why we copy them for each of individual polygon anyway so let's do uh update the canvas now so you have the draw polygon uh, method so it's called draw polygon and that's equal to our function course like that, and it will take a polygon as, as a parameter, then an x and a y uh, position on where to draw that polygon. We say p equals p dot points, like that. And then we can say this in this case will point towards the context object. So we can say this dot begin path, this dot stroke, like that. And then we say this dot move to p zero. So the first x position plus x, and then the first y position plus y. So we move to that point. Then we move to all the rest of the polygons or the rest of the vertices. Say var i equals two, len equals p of length. I is less than len. I plus equals two here. So the step size of two is very important here. Now we say this dot line to p i plus x, p i plus 1 plus y, yes. So that's basic draw polygon function there for you guys. So let's see if this actually works. So let's go up to the game state. Let's create our render call here, our render method that took the context as a parameter. And let's just create a real simple polygon. Uh, so we say new polygon, like that. That took a list of uh, vertices so we can say uh, let's say uh, yeah let's take uh, negative one negative one yep one one yep and then uh, ooh, negative one one uh, negative one negative one like that. Now we can say this dot poly dot scale so it sh should be a bit bigger and let's scale it by 10 I guess. And let's just import implement that method real quick. So that's really simple we say bar i uh, sorry four bar i equals zero len equals list of points length i is less than len i plus plus so this time we won't have two as a step size but one and then we'll say this the points i times equals c like that and that should scale the polygon to uh, the size we want so yeah so i think we're good to go let's make sure that we call context draw polygon dot poly and at a particular shape so let's draw it at 100 100 and let's just set the stroke style so we actually can see the polygon so we say this canvas a constant of stroke style uh, style and let's set it white for now and hopefully now we should see some sort of polygon drawn well it didn't work so let's see do 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 Unexpected identifier. Okay, I forgot uh, <laughs> uh, a comma sign here. I hope not. Got some other error. Extend the should be extend. Yeah, so now we can see that the polygon is drawn here to the canvas. And let's scale it a bit more. So let's scale it to 50. It should be five times the big, big <laughs> the size. And yeah. You can see the polygon drawn. But it is drawn over and over again. 
and hence the big line. So let's add another method to the canvas context. So we can say context.clear all equals function. We don't take any parameters, but we say it is dot clear rect zero zero this width uh, this dot height like that. Then we basically before we draw the polygon, we say context dot clear all. Yeah, and now we have the polygon drawn the right way here. So anyway, let's do the rotation function now of the polygon. So that's really simple. We just cache the cosinus and sinus values of the rotation angle. So we say math of cosinus theta like that. And for the sinus, say math of sinus theta like that. And then we loop through all the points with the step size of uh, 2 again. So you say len equals this dot points dot length. i is less than len. i plus equals 2. And then we can say bar x equals this dot points at i. And the uh, y value is this dot points i plus 1, of course. And then we set the point values again. So we say this points of i equals cosinus times x minus sinus times y, like that. And then for y, the new y value, we say sinus times x plus cosinus times uh, y. So that's the rotation function, real simple. So let's see if it works. So let's go to the game state. Let's go to the update method. And you can say this dot poly dot rotate. 0 0.1 I guess. And now you can see that the polygon is actually rotating. So this is working real good. So far so good. But uh, just to have a polygon is a bit boring. So let's actually draw some asteroids since this is the asteroid games we are making. That should probably be the last thing to do here before we end this episode in this particular tutorial series. Anyway, let's create a new file again. Call it asteroid.js like that. Create asteroid class, so asteroid, and that will actually extend the polygon class if we want. So, yeah, why not? Uh, so, we say this polygon.extend, spell it right this time, and the constructor, uh, it took uh, a list of points, I think, as a parameter, as a parameter and will also take an x and y position. But basically, called a super constructor. So constructor with the uh, list of points, like that. And then we will set the x and the y positions here to x and y. Like that, I guess. So, that's it for the asteroid. But let's do a, a draw method as well. Then I can take a context, and then we say context of draw polygon. This and this are x and this are y as parameters like that. So, so let's see if it works so far. So I'll just include a, uh, the asteroid file here. So asteroid.js. Yep. And for now, yes, let's, let's, let's just go to the game files again. We can close down some stuff we won't need. This we won't need. This we won't need, uh, this we won't need, at least not for now. Yeah, anyway. So instead of poly, let's call a, uh, let's create an aster, and that will be a new asteroid. Like that, and for the x and y position, let's set it to 100, 100 again. And inside of the asteroid class here, we can say this.scale. Uh, yes, and let's set the scale here as a, as a second parameter. Anyway, so let's set the scale, let's set it to 20 for now. Uh, this we can remove, and then we just say this.aster.draw to the context. Let's see what will happen. Yep, it is drawn at least. 
and we can increase the size, size here, I think. Yeah, so that's working. But this sprite is a bit boring, so let's actually create some more cool looking uh, assets to the game. And for that, I have this polygon draw program I have developed, and it wasn't mean that you should see this image now, but you can basically just add that image uh, into the source code here if you want. Uh, down here in the after all of the, the basic GUI settings and stuff. Anyways, so if you go to that article here where this uh, image is inside, you can read some of the history behind the Asteroid game. And that's really cool. You can read of the people that made the first game and how you can exploit uh, some of the game mechanics in the original arcade game. Anyway, so. I will leave the, the link down in the description. But we will basically just go uh, draw these, create these shapes here. So you can create shapes by clicking on the on the grid system, and you can clear it using this button. You can't use the back and, and forward buttons. I haven't implemented them yet, and you can't use the move tool either on the layer tools and anything. So yeah, anyways, but you can create these two shapes between different coordinates, and I. Uh, highly recommend to use this kind of coordinates and you can uh, select them using this button and then you can copy them right click and then copy or you can just command C or control C anyways and as I said this will clear the canvas so I can do the first uh, as well here for you and then I will do the rest of them off camera uh, or in a time lapse or something like that so the first it looks to be like four squares and two up so can look here on what corner you're at. So four minus four, four minus two. Yeah, that seems too good. And then it goes something like that. It looks like yep, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so. So that's the first as for there for you guys. Now you can just select it, copy it, and uh, let's set. Uh, yeah, can we go up here, I guess. Create our points list like so, and we call the asteroids, asteroids like that to a new list with all the points here. So we have the first asteroid here, and then we can say uh, points asteroids uh, zero for now, and that should give us a bit more interesting shape. Yeah, so here we can see that now is that particular uh, asteroid drone, drone. So I'll do the rest of them here in the time lapse and I will see you when I'm back. So be right back. Yep, so that was all of the asteroids. So let's just make so that we create a random asteroid. So to do that, we can calculate the n here, and then we can say math of round, math of cosinus, sorry, math of cosinus, math of random <laughs> uh, times uh, points, asteroids, length, minus one, like that. And then we just set the n here into the asteroids and each time now we reload a page we should get a new type of asteroid. So that seems to be working. So that's good. So let's make the move and then and, and then let's call it a day. So to do that we can create the update method on the on the asteroid object or the asteroid class. And Let's create a velocity as well. Let's say this stuff velocity. Before we do that, though, let's get a random angle. So we say bar uh, r, yeah, yeah, r equals uh, two times math of pi. So this is radians. So a value between uh, zero and 360 degrees and let's get it a random speed as well so we say bar v equals um, 
yeah, math.random times 4 plus 1, I guess that's a good speed, at least in the testing phase. Now we say x equals to b times math.cosinus or y equals v times math.sinus or like that. Then you can say this of x plus equals x, this of y plus equals, uh, sorry, this of loss of y, this of velocity of x, like that. Then let's rotate it as well. So we'll rotate this, this of r, or root, uh, root angle. Yeah, let's hold it like that root angle and let's set that also here at the top so you say this dot root angle equals uh, 0 0.01 I guess times math or random times 2 minus 1 like that so that should give us a random value between 0 0.1 0 0.01 and minus 0 0.01 anyway so that's the basic S right here. So let's go down to the game state and let's just check if it works. So we say this of asterisk update. And we now you should can see that it moves in random angles like that. So that's good. But it's moving out of the canvas and we want it to loop over and over. So let's just fix that as well. So to do that we can do it like this, we can set uh, max x, set it to null at the start, and the max y, set that to null as well. And then in the game state, we can basically say, after we have created the aster, we can say this dot aster equals, sorry, dot max x equals game dot canvas uh, context or width, or canvas or width. That's no, we need to say context of width, sorry. And this dot aster dot max y equals game dot canvas dot context dot height, like that. Then in the updates, all we need to do is to check if, uh, uh, what do you say? If, uh, yeah, you can say if this dot x is bigger than the max value, so this dot max x, then we say this x equals 0, and then we can say else if this dot x is smaller than 0, then we say this dot x equals this dot max x, like that. Then of course we should just change this to y, so we should do that both in the x and y directions, uh, like two, I guess. Just this one as well. And let's add, uh, yeah, semicolons to the edge, to the end there. And up to now, when we load the page, the canvas should be looping over the course of the canvas. So that seems to be the case here. So let's add a bunch of asteroids and let's see, check if they work as they should here. So we can just tab that in one step, of, or actually we can do it for all of them. And then we can say this to asteroids equals to a new array, our empty list. And then we say for our i equals zero, i is less than, let's say, 10. For now, i plus plus, like that. Just create some new asteroids. And we can say var here instead, I guess. Like that. And then we just push it to the asteroid array. So we say this asteroids are push asteroid, like that. And then instead of this asteroid that update and this asteroid floor. So you can do it like this, I guess. Uh, yep. So you can just say uh, for var 
i equals zero, len equals this long asteroid or len. I is less than the len, i plus plus. And say this asteroid at i dot update. And here we change to draw, of course, with the context as a parameter. And now we can see we have a bunch of asteroids drawn to the canvas. So that's it for this today, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will uh, continue this series real soon. So thank you for watching, guys. And I hope I see you in the next video. Bye.